Now we're kicking more into my special effects kit. These are the kind of things that I'll use on photo shoots and uh, special effects work for YouTube and tutorials. These are all Pro Air Hybrid makeup which I used for my Yondu makeup tutorial. If you've not seen it, go and check it out because you'll hear more about how this works. It's a great, great product. I also have more of it here. All of these need a good shake so you can't really see the colours properly. I have some really vibrant paints by Krylon. These are their aqua colour paints. Great for body painting. Some of them I'll run through an airbrush. Depends on the look I'm going for. This one, for instance, is their soft cream, which I used in my Joker makeup tutorial. Again, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. These are some of the vibrant ones I've used on tutorials or photo shoots for magazine publications. And I have a whole host of those colours down here and more in my actual airbrush kit. Then I have loads of face paint colours. These ones are superstar paints. Smell like pollen, but they are absolutely fantastic paint. Sponges, coloured hairspray. This drawer contains my glitters. I've got loads of different ones here by Krylon. This one's by Kiss My Fairy. They're all great for kind of festival looks. And so then I've got a little palette here that I use. These ones are by Lit Cosmetics. Really pretty, a great range of different colours. Some of them have got chunky glitter, some of them are fine. And then in here I've got more glitter. <laughs> Some of them are just from eBay, which I used for nails. So I still keep those for when I do my own nails. ASOS are doing some glitters now, which are really nice. And then in here, I've got Atagel. The only reason it's in this drawer is because it doesn't fit into my other special effects drawer. This one is what I would use for old age makeup. And then you mix it with a mixing medium and then you use that on the skin. These are some small metallic gold pieces of paper which I've cut up into tiny pieces which I used for an editorial shoot. And then I've got some Swarovski crystals in there. In this drawer we've got Super Colour, mostly Krylon products and a Skin Illustrator palette. Got some more but they're in the bottom drawer. This one is the Onset Flesh Tones. This is what you use to colour skin and prosthetics and you mix this with alcohol because as you can see it's completely dry no transference until you mix it with alcohol. Super colour you'll have seen me use a lot in a lot of my Halloween tutorials. You get a nice mix of colours and these ones are cream based so this one's got some brighter colours in it. Another sort of skin industry palette this one is by Toby Cells it's the post-mortem palette. This one I use a lot for my zombie work doesn't come off until you mix it with alcohol. These are some um, acetate that I've had holes put into. I get Tommy to do them for me, so when I'm doing a photo shoot and I need some sort of texture to the skin, I'll often airbrush through acetate with holes and patterns in. So this is Krylon's version of a Skin Illustrator palette. This one is a Body Illusion palette. As you can see, it has been used a bit, mostly this shade. <laughs> and it just splatters everywhere. But if you use a bit of alcohol, this all comes off, it comes really clean. You can get it off these colors, no problem. This one is an aqua color palette. So this one is paint activated by water. This one's another aqua color palette. This one is also activated with water. And then I've got a random stipple sponge lingering. So this is just a bit of an odds and sods drawer at the minute. It's got my Vaseline in, which I use mostly on mortician's wax or FX wax just to smooth it out. Contact lens solution, another palette. Sculpt Gel in Clear and Sculpt Gel in the Flesh Tone, which you've seen me use a lot of. If you'd like to see the clear one in action, again, go check out my Yondu tutorial because I do something very clever with it. This is Dermaflage. This is great for concealing scars and a bit like using Botox, but without having to use Botox. It comes as a syringe. These two mix together to create a bit of a putty which you then press into an indentation that you might have on your skin and then you use a kind of silicone sponge which comes in it that has a kind of skin texture to it you press it onto the skin completely covering and camouflaging the indentation so you can see her furrow lines there and then the after it's very clever but you can also use this for special effects makeup and then i have a full blood kit by vermilion which i got from the makeup armory also from the makeup armory i picked up some FX forensic glass so you can pretend to put this into the skin and it'll look like real shards of glass but in actual fact it's just soft silicone. Here we have another special effects drawer. Here I have some of the um, prosthetics paint. This one is from Nimba Creations so we've got some different colours. Believe it or not mixing primary colours together you can actually create flesh tones so if these two don't work for you then you can make your own. 
Wig caps for when I'm wearing a wig for a specific look. Sealant, scotch tape, I couldn't live without this. Pro Shield Barrier Foam, which I apply to my skin or my model skin before doing special effects. It's going to protect the skin and make sure that it's easier to remove the products. This is a Mayron Mixing Liquid, works really well with their metallic powders. A mini sculpt gel, how cute are these ones? Abschmink, which is a really good kind of like cold cream makeup remover. It's well loved and I use this when I'm doing really intense makeup looks and I just want to get that makeup off my face. This stuff is brilliant. Some more FX wax. This is a bruise wheel. So if I'm creating bruises, um, making someone look like they've been punched, I can just mix these colours to create a realistic bruise. This is silver grey, which you put into hair to make it look like you've aged. Needs a good shake, but I've used this for old age makeup before. It's really, really effective. Rigid Collodion great for creating scars if you missed my shark bite tutorial then go and check it out and i'll show you there how to use this and how it works it's really good this is my liquid latex i do have a krylon bottle but this is the only one that i seem to have in the drawer at the minute but i need a new one this one i got in october but as you can see it's already started to change color so i will need to get another one this is mastic remover so if i'm using a spirit gum on the skin to adhere something this is the best thing to remove it. This one's by Krylon. I got this from the Makeup Armoury. This is Tooth Enamel. It's great if you're creating a pirate or a zombie and you want to change the teeth to look weathered, worn, dirty, smoker's teeth, anything like that. These are really great palettes. Again, activated by alcohol and they come off the teeth really easily. I have a Krylon Spirit Gum, which is in my other kit. But this is one I keep on hand in case I don't have my kit to hand and it's in the car. Then I can just pull this one out. This one was probably from Nimba Creations. Gelatin. I use this a lot in previous tutorials, especially my Snow White one. This is Full as Earth. I use this to create my cracked skin look with all the nice colours. I'll insert a photo for you. It's a really great product. And very good for detoxifying your skin and pulling out impurities so even if you mix it up just as a face mask it's really good Mel gel for prosthetics I actually have some molds which might be in the other drawer um, and you spread the Mel gel out into it then I've got silicone pigment by mold life when I was doing sculpt gel I mixed in some of the silicone pigment to change the skin tone to make it a bit darker to suit my model long handled cotton buds so more contact lenses these are the glitter versions of the Dermaflask, which I just showed you a minute ago, that sort of conceals the scars. This one's more for sort of special effects and having fun with. I've got a couple of different ones of those. Some more wig caps, because you... Being serious. Because you can never have too many. Some little brushes. This is a scraper to go with my Mel Gel silicone sets. So these are little scars that I would then push the Mel Gel into, scrape the products across and allow it to set cotton balls. Tons and tons and tons of contact lenses for all my different looks. Telus's Super Self Plus, great at removing prosthetics, grape sensitive skin. Yeah, really good product. Zombie moulds. These are brow bone and zombie teeth marks. These are brow bones as well. Then I've got polymorph. If you'd like to see how to use this, you can check out my devil horns tutorial because I show you in depth how to use that there. This is my special effects box. It will be the one that I'll grab if I'm going out on a job. We have some wound filler, powder blood, splatter blood, contact lenses, some TV vampire teeth. Then I have a burn wheel and another bruise wheel. I have sort of mortician's wax, nose putty, and some more there. White tooth enamel, crepe hair, uh, scratch blood. Then I've got some more wound filler, putty, and blood. A big bottle of glycerin, witch hazel, always need it, you'll see that I use it in lots of tutorials. Film blood, this is the transparent dark blood. I have the blood capsules in there, great for putting in the mouth, they give a bit of a foaming effect and then you can just sort of allow your natural saliva to mix with them and then dribble out of your mouth. Gross but very cool. I have another super colour palette here. Tube of Two Plast, which is great for creating blisters on the skin. Another mastic remover. Here I have some brushes that I use just for special effects, so they are gross to look at, so I'm not gonna get them out, but they are clean. This is the bag I take around with me as my professional kit when I'm doing weddings, photo shoots. And this one is my well-loved Charles Fox bag. 
now known as Cruella. In here I keep my Ico mascara. I always use Ico mascara on weddings and jobs because it's waterproof. This one is a fibre mascara so it's great at elongating the eyelashes. Lip glosses, eyebrow gels, I've got my palette in here, eyelash glue, eyebrow pens, scissors and tweezers. Mascara spoolies and cotton buds. Soap brows there, chewing gums. Then I have a mix of pencils. I've got a mix of MAC, Charlotte Tilbury and NARS and Krylin. They're great for keeping hair out of people's faces while I'm doing makeup. Brow stencils, in case I've got a client who really doesn't have great brows or barely anything there and you'd like a guide, then they're great. I tend to freehand most stuff, but it's just in case. And shadow shields. I've got a pencil sharpener in there. This is by Natasha Denona and it's a mascara guard. So you put this behind the lashes and then you put the mascara wand up against the guard and it's not going to ruin your makeup. I had to tie a knot in this because I was walking along to a photo shoot and this snapped on me and everything fell out of my bag. So, But the tie has lasted for a good couple of years now so it's doing well. So in this bag I've got concealers and I carry my MAC paint pots in here. I've done two weddings the last two days and both my clients required cream eyeshadow so these were the colours that I used so I've just shoved them in there for now but they'll go back into my single eyeshadow drawer. So I have a mix of the Urban Decay Naked Skin, I've got NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer. For more mature skin I use things like the Veil Complexion Illuminating, they're a bit like the YSL Touche Clap, Paint Pots by MAC and obviously I have the J Manual Beauty Concealers because they are phenomenal. In this bag I have my Inglot Duraline which you know I use a lot, especially when I'm using eyeliner. My favourite powder to use is the Vichy Demo Blend. It sets everything in place and literally doesn't move. I've got my Chanel Bronze Universal, a MAC bronzer, a range of different blushes. I've got peachy tones, pink tones, shimmer, matte, champagne pop, hula light for all my fair skinned girls and also normal hula. I've got my Duo Glow blushes by Natasha Denona, MAC Soft and Gentle, another one by Illa Masca, Mary Lou Manizer by The Bum. I also carry around in my kit some cream blushes and highlighters. These are by Mascara Beauty and they're great because they just sort of slot out like this and you can use them with your fingers or a brush. I normally sort of decant them onto the back of my hand with my finger and then use it from there. So this MAC palette I've put together, these are the Pro Sculpt powders by MAC and then I've got some blushes in here by MAC and Makeup Geek. This MAC palette is what I mostly use for bridal, ignore the blue. This side I mostly use for bridal and this is just other colours that I like to use when I'm on shoots and stuff. This one looks as though it's gone funny but it's not. I usually mix Duraline mixed onto that to use as an eyeliner. So the rest of this eyeshadow is absolutely fine and this is the section I use to make eyeliner on and then I just scrape the top off of it. This is my Z palette and this contains all of my favourite Makeup Geek eyeshadows and I carry this round in my kit but I'll also drag it out to use it for YouTube. This is my Bobbi Brown lip palette, barely used because I've got so many favourites in another palette that I've created for myself but I'd still like to have it just in case I ever need it. I also have the Bobbi Brown BBU palette which is the concealer and foundation palette. This is the lip palette that I mostly use. When I finish one I'll just take it out of the pan and then put a new lot of that same colour in. And if you want to see how I decanted these, I actually did a tutorial when I was making this palette. So you can go and check that out. This is the little mirror I carry around just to show clients their makeup. It's from Benefit. I have this MAC Naked Pigment in my bag. Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. Urban Decay All Nighter. But my favourite is the Ben Nye Final Seal, as you can see I've only got a little bit left in this one. I always carry a small pot of Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream and I use this on all my clients. Soap and Glory Hand Sanitizer, this is the best smelling one, my favourite. This is the Becca Backlighting Primer which I use on my client's skin when I'm doing their prep. I always also use the First Light Primer, as you can see I'm starting to run out of this one and it smells like lemon, it's so nice and all my clients always comment on this, it's so beautiful. Always have some eyelash curlers in my bag, these ones are by Natasha Denona. MAC Strobe Cream works as a lovely base if someone wants a really dewy finish but it's not something I would put all over the face like some people do, I prefer it just on the high points. This palette is a must in my kit, it's the Louise Young Essential Eyes Palette. I always keep powder puffs in my bag, I've got a MAC one and this one by Tilt. 
and then I wash these and then give them a spray with a sanitizer. Benefit Professional Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer and this is a smoothing primer. This one is my shimmer palette. This is the one with sort of like duochrome eyeshadows. Most of these are from Makeup Geek. Bioderma Kills Ultra Facial Moisturizer. A big version of the Pore Pore and Honey Balm by Savannah Organic. And also the Murad Oil Control Mattifier. This one's great for those of you with oily skin. Also carry around my camouflage cream. In my second bag, I carry around my makeup brushes. Also my sponges, which I keep in blender rail cases. Even my mini ones, I keep them in there. I've got face brushes here, eye brushes, and then kind of all the little tools that I would use. And then I have a whole bag dedicated to different types of foundations. I have Illamasqua Skin Base, Giorgio Armani, MAC Studio Fix, Bobbi Brown Longwear, NARS, Sheer Glow. In this huge Cover FX bag, I carry round cluster lashes. So these are ones that I'll always use on clients for bridal and mothers of the bride. And, and I've got a variety of sizes here. Also cotton pads. Another thing that I carry in my makeup case is this antibacterial makeup spray and this can be used on anything so I will spritz over my brushes, I will use it on my eyeshadow pans, it doesn't affect powdered makeup and you can also use it on cream products and everything so it's just a great way to keep everything sanitised. And then in this Makeup Forever bag I carry around my airbrush kit, my cleanser to clean my airbrush in between clients to make sure it doesn't get clogged up, plug. This is my mini compressor, and as you can see, it's really small, so it's so handy to carry around with me. It does everything that I need, and it doesn't take up much space. I also have the hose in that little bag, which connects to the compressor and the guns. And then these are my two airbrush guns. So it's now the next day, because it took me so long to get through everything that I didn't get a chance to do a little sign off. So that pretty much covers most of my makeup collection. There are a few things around the room that I haven't filmed. If you follow my room tour, you'll see that I've got glitters out, I've got foundations around the top of my cupboards, I've got lipstick collections, I've got tons and tons of brushes on my table, and I've got loads of makeup that I haven't got through yet, which is in little boxes on the floor. So I hope that's everything. <laughs> if you've got any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you again soon. Bye!